Alright, welcome back to Mistara for the very last Master Level Module, Talons of Night. This week's book is a doozy, as it is the size of Night's Dark Terror and designed to flat out kill the party at every turn. Keep in mind this is a module that was designed for level 20 and up characters, so that means for some extremely tough fights. Don't worry, the entire party is going to die, however you will get better. Strangely enough, this module is actually a step backwards in power levels as Twilight Calling was part of the meta plot and ended with the party pushing level 35, and this module was suggested for levels 20 to 25. Considering the counters you're going to be facing, stick with Twilight Calling's recommendation. I'm Mr. Welch, and let's finish off the Master Set. Written by then Paul Jacques, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, back in 1987, Jacques did the interior art with the external art done by Daniel Horn, and committing one of my biggest pet peeves in module creation, using cover art that doesn't reflect any event in the module. The module says it's for levels 20 to 25 on the cover, but inside it says 20 to 5 to 30. And again, the module is pretty much just one high-level encounter after another, and the pregens in the back are all closer to level 30. So the module cover is the part that's incorrect. The module is massive at 54 pages, but a dozen of those pages are handouts and NPCs, along with the rules for Nine Man Morris. So that's not as beefy as it looks. But it's still a large module. It's easily the largest of the M series. And the theme of the module is repetition. Spoilers, you're going to get ambushed by night walkers, flyers, and crawlers a lot. And by a lot, I mean about halfway through the module, you're going to be expecting every encounter to be broken up by one of those buggers. And most of the time, you're going to be right. Monsters attack, and when you get them down to half hit points, they bugger out. It's a bad story writing to keep going back to the same tactic over and over again. The first fight's going to be tough because the party isn't expecting it. The fifth fight, not only are you expecting it, you've probably got countermeasures already in place, and the creature is going to be torn to shreds the instant they appear. Another bit of repetition which grinds this module to a halt is its strange love with the ancient board game Nine Man's Morris. The game dates back to Roman times. Read up on it on Wikipedia if you want to know more about it. It really helps to speed the module up if the players already know how to play the game, or else you're going to have to stop the module to teach them how to play another game entirely. It does come with the board printed out and some pieces to play with, or you're just going to be using coins. Three times in this module, you literally have to stop playing Dungeons & Dragons to play Nine Man's Morris. That's another pet peeve that gets triggered, testing the player's ability for figuring something out external of the game rather than the character's ability to do it. That's a major problem with a few adventures when they test the player's ability to do something when it should be a test of the character. If you want to stop a game because it requires the party to answer Winona Ryder trivia questions, I am going to ace that test without blinking, even though my character who has no idea who she is. Stopping a game once for some sort of diversion is bad enough, but this module stops it three times. And once you even have to stop the first game of Nine Man's Morris to play another game of Nine Man's Morris. The meat of the module is partially related to going to a peace conference to decide the fate of Norwald to prevent a war between Thiatis and Alphasia. This, of course, is not canon as the Gazetteer series came out, and the official timeline has the two empires in a cold war not constantly invading each other. The Norwald aspect is minimal as you spend most of the module on the Isle of Dawn, that location's first appearance of any setting. They sp you spend most of the time in Thothia, Mistara's version of ancient Egypt, where you're going to learn to hate spiders. You get to the city of Adaro, and you have to find the library to get the information to find the MacGuffin that's going to bring peace to the two empires. First part of the trip, you're on a cursed voyage that the party is going to quickly recognize all the signs of a nightshade attack, and the fact that if you start to win, they just pop out of the plane and attack later when they're healed. You're going to get real tired of that real fast. Once you find the clue, don't worry if you don't find the clue. A random NPC will just show up and hand it to you anyways. You're off to find the magical temple to get the next clue to find the MacGuffin. And you've got some scary encounters, though. The module introduces squads of monsters, which instead of having the monsters come at you one at a time, instead they come as you a single group, which acts as a multi-attack, higher-level monster. As you deal damage to the squad, the number of attacks decrease and the morale falters. It's a decent way of handling lower level modules against epic level characters. The modules are going to end up bloody smears anyways, but at least they're going to put up a fight. So yeah, I do give credit where credit's due. That was a good idea. I just wish they had added that before the very last module of the pretty much run of the mortal level adventures. So you get to the magical temple and fight the large number of bone golems in the middle of a fungal forest filled with yellow mold, and you face the first encounter with Nine Mans Morris. A vampire decides to force you to sit down and play a board game. Every time you lose a piece, one of the party members has to go fight monsters, so it does kind of break up the monotony of playing a board game. Only one of the encounters the random party member has to face is another game of Nine Man's Morris. 
Once you finish the game of Nine Man's Morris, the vampire attacks, along with Nightshade attack number three. By this time, you are becoming depressingly good at fighting giant abominations made entirely out of shadow. So surprise, surprise, the MacGuffin is in another castle. So you get to trudge through wilderness to get to the actual hiding place of the MacGuffin. The module then goes into mass combat, as you have to befriend a tribe of Thanatons to defeat the army of Aranea between you and the MacGuffin. Apparently, the Isle of Dawn has been uh, franchising out monsters, I guess. In the process of making friends, you're facing Nightshade Attack Number 4. I would say spoilers, by this time, the attacks are so telegraphed they might as well be written in Morse code. You raise an army of flying squirrel men along with some elves and some trains that happen to be living in the heavily wooded parts of uh, ancient Egypt, and you have yourselves a nice little war. Finally, you get to the MacGuffin location and get to the plot. Once you get to the actual temple, you get to face the immortal Night Spider, who has manifested on the maternal material plane to stop you. As we all know, the only way to showcase a battle between epic level adventurers on the cusp of obtaining immortality and the evil spider goddess hellbenting on stopping you is to play a game of Nine Man's Morris. Seriously, you have to play a live action version of the game with spiders and PCs playing the part of the game pieces, and then after that's done you get to fight the immortal creature, which can be killed somewhat easily if you paid attention to the dozens of clues you were force fed earlier. So now that you've got the MacGuffin, you head to the Peace Conference, where you will be accused of kidnapping both Emperor Thincall and Empress Ariadna for about 30 seconds before that charade ends in another bloody intervention from a Nightwing that's, that's there to get the party to follow it. As you dispel the magic on the polymorph messenger, then you get to head to the final part of the module. At this point, if the module isn't stockpiling dispel magic and restoration spells, you deserve what you get. You follow the obvious tunnel and get attacked by all the big bads, which despite being the restored immortal night spider, her pet vampire, and her half-spider pharaoh priestess, along with an entire army of zombies, the party is going to open up with meteor swarms for the first round of combat, and then it just goes downhill for the bad guys from this. So then after the big fight, you get to the Sphere of Death, where everyone is turned into zombies and discover the missing emperors and emperor have been dead for centuries because time passes differently in this plane of existence, but it doesn't matter because they've left pieces of themselves that have been turned into imperial jerky. I'm not kidding. And you have to take them back to get cloned, because, but that's all spoilers, but it doesn't really matter because nothing really happens in this part of the module, and it's all for shock value, but by this time the party is just screaming for the module to be over with because they are so tired of the constant undead hit-and-run attacks that the wizard has used spells like Temporal Anchor so many times he's about to trademark the name for his own use. So once you've got the Imperial Jerky, you head back and they get cloned, and the peace conference can continue. Then we launch into the next mini-game, where each party member gets to play Junior United Nations and negotiate a peace between Thyatis and Alphacia, where the object is, is to get each empire what they want and to keep the satisfaction level of all parties involved in the positive based on a chart you get provided. Though the module doesn't explain what many of the entries actually entail, and if you succeed and everybody walks away happy, then the next war doesn't happen for another D6 years. That concludes Talon of Night. It tries to be epic, but it gets bogged down in mini-games, and the repetitious attack of the Nightshades gets tedious for the party quickly. It doesn't feel like a master-level module. Sure, it's got the mass warfare on every single module in this series has, but it's just a railroad leading to several dungeon crawls. The concept that was there was the ability to shape the future of two empires by dealing with Thin Call and Ariadna as equals, but they're just cameos in the module. So much of the module assumes the party just isn't going to use their massive magical powers and hordes of magic items to just skip ahead and avoid all the boring stuff in between. I have no idea what the obsession with Nine Man's Morris was. One mandatory game would have made it a notable side event, but three times? To make it worse, the first two times are between one player and the DM. So like the Cyberpunk and Shadowrunner, Netrunner, and Decker issues, when Nine Man Morris boards come out, it's time for the rest of the party to go raid the fridge. The model does show the need for a Mastara extra planar source book. There's a lot of continuity problems with the sphere of entropy being a physical place instead of a school of thought. That would be like everybody suddenly going to the plane of Socrates where all of his philosophy suddenly given material form. The module does make a big deal about the time dilation as you hop between planes, but that's just to explain how you return at the exact same time you've left. The master level modules as a whole were not impressive. None of them stood out like Night's Dark Terror, Test of the Warlords, Isle of Dread, Castle Amber. Knights, Talons of Night is no exception. It's disjointed at best, and it's just more of the same at worst. You're supposed to be questing for immortality, not running around on a fetch quest for some king. So what this module is, it's just a bunch of fetch quests. Fetch the book from the library, fetch the artifact from the temple, fetch the heads of state from the plane of death. That's not how you end a series on, on epic level adventures. To add insult to injury, after carving up a literal god 
twice in this adventure, you get told, congratulations, you've secured maybe five years of peace. That's insulting. The module secondhand is expensive. It's, it can be expected from any 50 plus page module. You're looking at $75 for a physical copy minimum. The POD copy is about 15 bucks on average, so grab that one instead. PDF, as usual, is five bucks. How bad do you want to complete the collection? That's the only question you need to ask when buying this one. Now, I'm taking a break from modules for a while, going into some of the accessories D&D gave us for the Mastara setting. Next week is the Bestiary of Dragons and Giants, which gave us some insights on how to work these creatures into your campaign. It gave us the rather neat spell sleeve, which shows us what spells a dragon can have at any encounter just by sliding it up and down with that list of spells. Of course, it was fragile as can be, and only a few survived after like a week or two, but it was a nice try. So until next time, seriously, try me on Winona Writer Trivia. I will break you.